Long story, sorry. Not sure what detail is relevant so you get it all. One of my interests is relocating abandoned pack trails back in the hills. Roads make them obsolete for freighting but they are still good ways to get around on foot without being seen. Also cool access to hunting areas nobody remembers and good ways to pack out game with less effort than just bailing cross country through the pucker weeds. One I wanted to find goes from Mariel, a town along the Rogue River in southwest Oregon up Mule Creek past some old mine sites up to Panther Ridge which separates the Rogue from Coquille Rivers, then a short distance west on the ridge to Hanging Rock where there used to be a lookout tower which overlooked the part of the Rogue Canyon. I located a hand-drawn map in a book and talked to an old guy who'd been one of the last freight packers to use the trail before the road was built making the trail obsolete. I thought I had it dialed in. First trip was sort of uneventful. My buddy Pat and I, both still in high school at time, took off from the upper end. My folks dropped us off by the road and we hiked down a dirt two track to old red mine where we thought the actual trail began. We looked around a couple hours, couldn't find it, and despite it being November, had to boonie crash down the creek bed a mile and a half wading and jumping off waterfalls till we hit the pack trail near the mines in the lower canyon. We took it as a challenge we had to solve. Pat and his nephew made one attempt at it while I was unavailable. I got my turn a couple years later when he was off in China. There's a trail the whole length of Panther Ridge so I had my folks drop me off at the west end. I hiked the whole trail, went by Hanging Rock, and walked the two and a half miles down the Jeep Road to Old Red Mine for a total of about 14 miles that day. It was still afternoonish, but I was tired and done walking. Picture the mine. Standing in the creek looking upstream, the access road comes steeply down from behind you on your left, in other words, it trends upstream but downhill from the ridge line to the mine. There's no bridge, just loose head-sized rocks in the creek, but enough you can rock hop and keep your feet dry. Across the creek on the right is the mine itself. No shaft, but tailings as if they'd mined away a small ridge. There's a flat, and on a shelf, hanging 10 feet above the creek, is miner's shack. I rolled out my sleeping bag, made dinner, walked around a little, then climbed into my bag. It was maybe 7.30. I was down in the shade but the sun was still bright on the ridge above me. I don't think I was there long before I heard rocks roll across the creek in the mining tailings. That happens, didn't give it much thought. Then I heard rocks roll below that little flat as if something were going down the bank into the creek bed. I heard rocks roll and water splash in the creek. Then something started up the bank on my side of the creek. It sounded like it had passed 30 to 50 feet downstream from me. I rolled over to look just in time to see the back half of whatever it was leaving the road I was laying in and going into the brush. All I saw was from about the back rib on back, no idea what the front looked like. What I saw was, obviously four-legged. A stubby tail maybe a foot long, just hair covered, no tuft at the end. It was a stiff looking tail, not flexible. It didn't have a paunch or low hanging belly, but that part of the body was still at least 18 inches thick, maybe more bulkwise bigger than the adult tiger I saw at the zoo. The hair was short and sort of cat-like, but unlike a cougar's hair, which is dusty brown, this was more of a butterscotch color. And the rear knees bent the wrong way. From where I was, they appeared to have the hinge pointing forwards, not backwards. I still don't know what the critter was. It was big, 300 plus pounds for sure, maybe twice that. It's nothing that belongs there. I don't know if it was an escaped zoo animal something normal but deformed by a bad injury, or something, weirder. Well, I bout crapped my sleeping bag. There I was with over 20 miles of walking to do to get home, flashlight batteries for about 4 hours, night falling, this thing in the brush with me apparently circling. What to do? Within a few seconds, I grabbed my glasses, stuffed my feet into my boots without socks, never bothered to tie them, stuffed my junk into the top of my pack without actually putting anything away, scooped the pack up in my arms, and rock hopped across the creek. Priorities changed. I didn't care about no trespassing and I didn't care about hazardous chemical signs. I entered the miner's shack, unlocked, lucky me, set my pack down, closed the door, and pushed everything I could find against the door to block it. The shack was two rooms inside with a short dividing wall that pointed at the center of the outside door. In one room there was a wood frame about two and a half feet by six and a half feet horizontal with a heavy rubber sheet like inner tube material tacked across it, the miner's mattress. I spent the night sitting on that mattress with my back against the back wall which was hung over the creek so nothing could get to the wall from outside, 4D mag light in one hand, .357 in the other awaiting on edge for whatever might happen. 
Several times in the night I heard gravel crunch outside but nothing ever came up on the shack's porch or tried the windows or door. By daylight I'd choked down a granola bar and had my pack packed. As soon as I could see the ground at my feet and my pistol sights, I bailed. Screw looking for the trail, I repeated our previous path right down the creek bed, off the same waterfalls, etc etc. I haven't been back. I know where the trail is now. We were in the wrong fork of the creek. There are USFS trail signs. I can't quite get my nerve together to try that one again. About 10 years ago, noonish on a weekend day in the middle of the winter, I was sitting in my living room doing something or other minding my own business and the phone rang. It was my dad and he was clearly all jacked up. First thing he said was I just killed the son of a bitch. Dot. Oh oh. Not sure where that was going. You see, my dad has a temper and an unpredictable streak. I was considerably concerned about where this story might go. Uh, what son of a bitch would that be? And then I got the story. He runs a fishing lodge. He lives in a cabin adjacent to the main lodge building. He was sitting on his bed listening to an NBA game when the dog started whining and digging at the floor. After a bit he grabbed a flashlight, went outside, and looked up under his cabin floor, it's about an 18 inches high crawl space, expecting a raccoon or skunk or the like. There was a kind of gravelly growl and two very large eyes uncomfortably far apart reflected back at him. He backed out of there in a hurry and went back inside for a gun. He wasn't real sure what he was shooting, but he aimed between the reflective eyes and sent lead between them. There was flopping and thrashing, then nothing. He had to pry some boards off the front of the cabin to get at it, then dragged out a cougar. Yep, he'd shot a friggin' cougar under his cabin floor. A big one. Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife came up and got it from him. They autopsied it. Their determination was it was a very old male whose kidneys were failing and, though starving to death, it was unable to hunt, not even to catch the pet deer that hang around the place. But it sure as hell could have grabbed Grandma as she wandered the driveway. They said it was about as dangerous a cat situation as they'd ever seen. Good job, Dad. But still, don't call me and start the conversation with I just killed the son of a bitch. I've mentioned my family having a fishing lodge I think. I'm not involved in the biz anymore, the family lived in a cabin adjacent to the main lodge building. There was a second, smaller cabin our seasonal hired help lived in during the busy season. It was empty in the winter. When I was 13 to 14 I began staying in it in the winter so my sisters, folks, and I had just a little more elbow room. The window by the cabin door overlooked the back porch of the lodge where the garbage cans were set and where we fed our cats and dogs. That being the case, that's where the bears, raccoons, skunks, etc. would show up. Part of the fun of being in that cabin was being the official pest blaster. I'd generally leave the curtain open so I didn't have to move anything and alert the varmints I was getting ready to ventilate them. I took to sleeping with a Winchester 92 and .3840 under a blanket beside me and a Colt single action army in the same caliber under my second pillow. In the middle of the night one night I woke with a start, scared. I could feel eyes on me. I didn't think, I just acted. I reached under the pillow, grabbed the Colt, and thumbed the hammer as I rolled over. I wasn't lined up but as soon as I could see the window at all I could see the silhouette of a head, someone was looking in at me. When the muzzle swung into the light from outside, whoever it was dropped. Damn good thing for them. The 180 grain soft point out of the gun would go through that wall like a thrown brick through one ply toilet paper. The nearest neighbors at the time were two miles away. None of my family would fess up to peeking in my window. There's no through for a transient to be going. I have no idea who that was. For a while my grandma lived in that same cabin. Her folks had built the lodge. I just vaguely remember my great grandma, my great grandpa died when I was 13 to 14. He was there when I got my first deer. Pretty special. The doorknob's lock didn't work so they put a padlock hasp on the inside and she'd lock the door by putting a carriage bolt through the hasp. Her mom, my great grandma, was the original dingbat airhead, good gal just really scatterbrained. Blonde before that meant anything. So I had inherited some guns and ammo for them, mostly in 20 round boxes. I was studying up to figure out what heck I had. Good times to be a 13 to 14 year old kid with a pile of guns. I guess there never is a bad time for that. One night, maybe the same winter as I had the face looking in the window, I had locked up and gone to bed. Middle of the night there was a presence in the room. You know as a kid how it feels when your mom comes in to check on you in the dark. 
You know you're not alone but it's safe and comfortable so you don't really truly wake up. I had one of those. Thought I'd dreamed it cause I had, after all, dropped the carriage bolt through the hasp and nobody could get in without tearing the door off the hinges, there was no merely unlocking it with a key. When I got up, all my boxes of ammo were organized. Not by caliber like a gun person would do, but by size and color. There sure wasn't anyone else in there with me. I don't think I did it in my sleep. But it was sure done. And the sum of the details point to, great grandma. It's a thing she'd have done, the way she'd have done it, if she were alive. Okay, one more before I give it up for the night. This is paranormal but I don't know what it was. We had about 180 acre field below our house, mostly out of sight around the corner behind a timbered ridge. Couple times a week I'd grab my old Colt SAA, .3840, and mosey down two miles to visit our nearest neighbors who were sort of elderly. One was an old gal whose husband had died when they were building their retirement house so she chose to live out their shared dream alone, the other was a couple across the road from her who knew me since I was three weeks old. I'd go yarn with the old gal, then go help the couple in their yard, pick berries, that sort of thing. Then go home in time for dinner. One day I was walking home across the field. The dirt two track that followed the fence splitting the field was right at the sun slash shadow line as the sun went behind the hill. As I walked along, I noticed there were birds singing but all a couple hundred yards away. I was in the center of a patch of strange silence. About halfway back the length of the field a grassy ridge comes down through the timber and joins it. There used to be a homestead there. I used to go sit on that ridge and shoot ground squirrels out on the flat where I was walking that day. I just happened to glance up there and see a nice buck still in the velvet looking down at me. We were about 175 yards apart, he was elevated maybe 20 feet. It was mostly flat to where he was, then the hill went up pretty steep. On that steep part, a major hiking trail followed the contour of the hill. So, I'm walking slow, wondering about the silence, and watching the buck. All of a sudden that guy took off like hell was on his tail stretched out and racing for the trees. Huh, wah? Then I saw something, or maybe I should say I didn't see something, that baffles me to this day. The grass in the field I was in was mostly waist to shoulder height because there was no livestock on it that year. There was a patch of that grass being smashed down like there was a 30 foot diameter invisible beach ball rolling along. It was smashed down flat at the center, it had popped back up after the invisible thing had passed. That spot of flattening grass took off on a bee line towards the deer like it was on an intercept course. Like a fast predator. Like watching a cheetah close on a gazelle on the nature shows. It was a race, deer trying to get to the timber before whatever it was caught it. I'm not sure how it turned out. The deer hit the tree line but I couldn't tell if the invisible thing continued into the trees or stopped after it got under and but out of the grass where it wasn't leaving a track. I don't know what I saw. I can't explain that. I just know I got the HE double toothpicks out of there and went home. I sorta of think whatever it was, I was its target till the deer got involved. I sure wish I knew what it was. Any thoughts? Anyone else ever see what looked like the track of an invisible 30-foot beach ball rolling along?